Yo, what is going on, guys? JPod Sports here, and welcome back to another video. And today's video is going to be a 53, my 53 man roster projection breakdown. So it's basically just going to be who I think is going to make the team. First, we'll start off with O line. Obviously, Andrew Thomas, Evan Neal are going to obviously make the team. But Matt Pert, I think, is going to make the team. The coaches seem to really like him, and he could be a very good swing tackle for us. He did have, and he actually did have a pretty good. Uh, gave me the Lions. I think he was like one of the only good linemen in that game. Uh, Julian Devonport was a guy that we signed recently a week, over a week ago. So he play, he's played, I'm pretty sure it was like 20 games as a starter tackle. He played with the Texans mostly. I think he should, he's probably going to make the roster. And Marcus McKeithen was a draft pick from 2023 where he got he tore his ACL. In a, and it was like before the FanFest game and – he just tore it like during warm ups. And this guy can play tackle, he can play guard, he can play all those positions. So it's really important to have a guy like this because someone goes down, you you need some versatility on O line. It's always important to have a versatile O line. And then JMS probably going to be the starting center on the team. He's obviously going to make the team second round pick. And then you have Ben Bredesen that's probably either going to, I think he might start at left guard, depending on how Josh Azudu finishes out last week of preseason and whatever else goes on. Because Ben Bredesen's shown probably to be our best guard on the team, which doesn't really say great things for us. I mean, Ben Bredesen's not a bad guard, but like Ben Bredesen is not like an ideal long-term guy that's probably going to be on the team for a while. So he's more of a short-term option. You never know. I don't know if the Giants, like if I'm making this, this gets posted, if the Giants signed like O lineman, so it's, this might get a little messed up if that happens. But then you also have uh, Josh Zudu from third round pick from – 2023 once again, which is I think he's gonna make the roster. I think he was supposed to be like our starting guard, but he's been kind of off to a rough start, and you only gotta help he could fix those problems because we could we could really use a young starting guard that he could play tackle too though. He's also a very versatile player. He could play tackle, so maybe he's just a long term backup option that's reliable. So it's not always you know sometimes you're not always drafting for starters. Sometimes you're drafting for good depth because that's a the a team of a really deep line is going to win many games. Many games, the team will win a deep line. Look at the Eagles, for example. Like they started drafting alignment when they were young, when they already had starters. So when they, when their original starters would retire or leave or for whatever happened, they would have the young players ready to go in. And there's always that deep line. Teams with deep lines make it far. Now, as we get to the next slide, it's quarterbacks, Tyra Taylor, Daniel Jones. Nothing really to say more. Daniel Jones, our franchise quarterback. Tyler Taylor, he's going to back up. A lot of people thought that maybe Danny, De- not Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito was going to maybe make the roster. He could. There is the new rule of the emergency backup quarterback because the 49ers, the Brock Purdy, he hurt his arm, and then Josh Johnson got a concussion. So Brock Purdy wasn't able to play and uh, wasn't able to throw the ball because his shoulder was all messed up. So they added the new rule, so you got to – extra quarterback, but he's got to be on the 53-man roster. If he's not on the roster, he can't play. So, and that that's our two starting quarter. That's Those are our two quarterbacks. Tyler, Tyler the backup, they know it's a starter. Now we get to the running backs. You might see a surprise name here, Jay Sean Corbin. I did mention in my uh, – after the Detroit Lions game, I did – it was Lions – no, it was the Jet. It was the – not the Jets. The, the last game, the um, Panthers, where Jay Sean Corbin just looks like he has more to offer than – James Robinson. James Robinson does not look good. Uh, he did not get a snap last game until the fourth quarter, which is those are the players that are not making the roster. This players most likely will not make the lot, roster. Um, so I think he's going to get caught. Jason Corbin, I really like. He, if you use him, he's averaging in preseason. I'm pretty, he's the leading rusher with 10 attempts, 45 yards, 4.5 yards of carry, which is pretty good as long as it's 33 yards. And then, not only that, he's really effective in the receiving game. Um, I think he's he's nine. He's around nine catches. He's just been really good for us. I don't know, catches. He's four catches for nineteen yards. But I feel like he has more to offer than James Robinson. But I honestly think the the ro- the roster or depth chart is just going to change by a weekly basis. But maybe the Jets feel more. Maybe they, one week they want to have four tight ends, or one week three on the backs. One, I think Gary Brett was getting cut because. Not, I don't know, let me see how about topic or but 
um, I think Gary Brightwell is getting cut just because Eric Gray is basically just secure that returner job. So that's all Gary Brightwell is really here for. And he only could really do kick returner. And it's not like I don't, I didn't really, like in my opinion at least, I didn't really think he made that much of an impact as a gunner or whatever he did on special teams. He's more of like, he got to play more fullback kind of. He wasn't really a running back. So I think he gets cut or on the practice squad. I think Eric Gray secures the return of the job and Jay Sean Corbin. The thing I like about him is he's good in the receiving game and he's got some speed. You can get him on the edge on one of their uh, both our top five, uh, top 10 pick tackles together. So I think I really like how he could turn out for us. Maybe one week he's on the practice wall, maybe one week he's not. Like, I just maybe he's like an elevation guy, some that guy that's gonna come out one week, maybe he's down that week. You never know, depending on who we're playing, maybe the drafts will bring up the extra block or whatever. So now. I think we got onto the receivers. And this, I have seven receivers. Uh, Wando Robbins, I'm not quite sure if he's going to be ready for week one. Uh, he has not really played. Like, he has not played in a preseason game. And I think he just started to practice. They took about the players I'm able to perform list. So that's good news. But I don't know if three weeks isn't really enough for him. But maybe it is. Maybe he gets some. Maybe he still he gets active to the roster where he's not really getting uh, starting snaps. He's just still you know gets a couple snaps like maybe three, just something small. But he got Jalen Hyde of course because he's you know the the promising rookie we all hope could be a star. Uh, he's really he's flashed. He really flashed in that Panthers game, showing his top tier speed, the way he's and his route running. His route running was on display where um, which was doubted and there was a. Uh, the press conference where um, Brandon Brown was talking about how he does his due diligence on players where he talked to the coaches. It was it because he said he can't run routes or is it just the limited route tree that they gave him? Cause Tennessee's offense is like 10 plays. It just verticals. It's, it's how it is. It's really, a, it's like a chip Kelly offense. It's just very fast. It's just verticals and it's, it's not really built for route running. Like, like if you're gonna be like, it's not really gonna show your route running ability. So and that's why I got crapped on it quite a bit. I'm kind of happy about it because now we got him on the team. I really think he could have been an early second round pick. I do not know how he felt those. I think you got Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell's another deep threat receiver that also can be used good in the short game because he's got breakaway speed, just zero to sixty. And then you got Darius Slayton, a guy that's probably gonna be the starting outside receiver. Either him or Paris Campbell are both gonna start, and then. I, Hype might be on the bench, who knows? And then Hodgins, Hodgins. I I don't know if Hodgins will start. I I hope he does. I think I think he will actually. Uh, Hodgins probably besides Sterling Shepard. Actually, I'm not gonna say that. But Hodgins is our biggest receiver. Now I'm not saying Shepard. I was talking about route running, but he's our biggest receiver, and he's a really good route runner. You saw the uh, Panthers game. He just he broke like two tackles and it was like two catches. And he got like 45 yards. I think I I really expect. Uh, big things from Hodges this year. Another year, Daniel Jones, and they seem like they really tr- he seems they seem to really trust one another. So I'm excited to see what happens there. And then you got Sterling Shepard, of course, the veteran that's been on the team for a while. I feel like this is going to be his last year in the league. And I also don't see you as a guy that you should cut. You need this is a guy you need on your team that brings some energy. He helps other players. You see videos of him and him helping Jalen Hyatt. Uh, run routes and teaching him different moves. So he's a good guy to have. Same goes with Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley is just a guy that it's like say it's third and three. You run like a little zig or flat or something like that. He's gonna he's gonna make a move and get that first down. We had to deal with that for quite a while with him, but I'm glad he's on our side now. And he just still has it. He still has a skill. I think he's obviously not the best as he was, but he still has some skill left. That uh, this is probably his last year as well. And then Wanda Robinson, like I said before, probably I don't know what up with him if he's going to play week one or what. But I have him here because he's going to make the roster. Um, But if you really look at our receivers, a lot of one-year, two-year deals besides Giant. So it kind of just goes to show you the Giants did not see a viable option at maybe like paying a big money receiver or drafting one. Well, they drafted Jalen Hyatt, but I'm talking about like early first round. So they went on got Sopka. That's how they use their free agency. That's how, it's, that's how you're supposed to use free agency. You don't really look for the long-term answers. I mean, it's nice when you come across, say, like, what T. Higgins is there. I, I wouldn't be mad with that signing or Brandon Ayuk or whatever. But that's more of you. Free agency is more used for, stop, like, getting stop gaps to fill needs and then drafting. So I like what they did with the Paris Camel signing. I think uh, he'll be good for us. Now we get to the tight ends. 
And this week I had uh, this. I have three tight ends and Darren Waller, Daniel Ballinger, and Lawrence Cager. Darren Waller, he's an elite tight end. He's already f- displayed his elite skill level against the Panthers. When Daniel was eight for nine, he targeted him four times his nine passes, and he looked really good. He's physical and he's fast. It's all you can really ask for. We haven't had this good of a re- receiving threat. That's Odell Beckham. So I'm excited to see how he plays in the season. And then Daniel Ballinger, he's a red zone guy. He's a really good blocker, and he's tall. So he's going to have in the red zone. And Lawrence Cager, he's like – he's kind of – he can pretty much do like – he's like a bootleg Darren Waller. <laughs> like he's just – he's just like – he's like his receiver skills because he used to be a receiver. So he's just – you can use him out in space. You could run four. You can run four wide of him, Waller, and like two receivers or something. See, so I really like Lawrence Cage. I think that was a good pickup we had last year on the waivers. I'm pretty sure. And now we get to the safeties. And you might, I don't know. You, some of you might be surprised to buy him. McCain's not on here, and you'll see why in a bit. But I have Xavier McKinney, Dane Melton, Jason Pinnock, and Javari Zones, and. McKinney is obviously a lock to be start safety. Dane Belton is probably going to be the backup. And Jason Pinnock has had a really good uh, training camp preseason. You name it, he's done it all. And But Javarius Owens has been very – I think he's been very good in the preseason. And he leads the team in tackles and pass deflections as like a seventh or sixth round pick. And I also think he was really drafted to play special teams. So that's really why I think he'll make it because our special teams was terrible last year. So we need all special teams help we can get. Um, now we get the corner. And I got, you know, Dory Jackson, Dante Banks, Trey Hawkins. Those are going to be the, probably the three starters week one. And then Cordo Flott, third round pick from last year. And Amani Owarie. I don't know if Amani Owarie is going to guarantee to make the roster. Uh, I did see William Jackson. The Giants had some interest in. So you guys see what happens. They may be able to sign him. Yeah, they won't. Uh, I think that was – maybe they were looking at him before they traded for Isaiah Simmons. But Nick McLeod, like I said, why Bobby McKinney got cut. McLeod could play safety. He's – a pretty physical player, so I think he could, he could pretty much. That's why I, I said I, I think I might have said in a previous video from a little while ago where I feel like Nick McLeod, Nick McLeod could fill part of Julian Love's shoes where he's kind of a versatile option that could play safety, he could play, and you can play him at slot corner, nickel corner. He, he's, just a, he's just a good player to have on the team. He honestly played really good for us last year. And I didn't really expect much out of him. I really thought he was going to be really bad, but he really wasn't. So I was a little impressed with how he played last year, and I think he'll make the roster once again. Yeah, I think he's been injured, though, but I still think he'll make the roster, unless they replace him with somebody else. And now we get the inside linebacker. You got the $40 million guy, Bobby Okereke. It's not Okereke. It's Okereke. I get confused. Um, and then if you really look at it, it's so deep compared to what it was last year. Because last year was Jalen Smith and um, Jared Davis. This is not fast, anything good, can't cover. It just slow to me. Now you get some speed in here, some young guys. They're like 26 and under, which is like crazy. And then, yeah, the Isaiah Simmons got traded. So another reason why McCain I don't have making the roster is because I feel Isaiah Simmons, if they really need to throw – because the Giants, like the, the – Wink Martindale really likes to run a lot of DBs on the field at once. So I feel like he could use him more of his he, – he could play both inside linebacker safety. He could play everywhere. I mean, he, there is concerns of some fans. Like, I don't, I don't know if – not saying it's Giants fans, but there's fans that are, like, posting uh, videos of him getting cucked in preseason. Honestly, when you're on a bad team, you just don't care. I, that's honestly what I feel. I just feel like when you're on a bad team, you have no motivation. But when – sometimes – change of scenery could really help if anybody's gonna unleash this guy like i said in my I, video from yesterday it's gonna be wink martindale wink martindale knows how he knows how to like make players good like chuck clark for example the ravens were like depleted at their secondary i think it was a 2020 but they were still like a top passing defense because of the way Wink martindale schemes his players he's just a very he's one of the best defensive coordinators in the nfl so i think this is like anything, and Wink Martindale's dream. He got Deontay Banks, Isaiah Simmons, O'Kerke, O'K- O'K- and he's just, they get, like, it's just like this defense is just so good. And now that's not your, your side. Oh, let me go over the rest. Darian Beavers, six round pick for last year. He looked to start last year, but then you got the ECL injury of McFadden. I think he's going to come in a lot of blitz packages. It's, he's really good at blitzes. And Cam Brown, special teams reasons. He's one of our best, he's our best gunner. 
I think he's. Uh, I think he'll make the team just because of that reason. Uh, so it, we need special teams help. It's just what it is. If you don't have good special teams. It's harder. You know, we punt the ball and you get the forty-five yard line. Um, and then I have Kayvon Thibodeau, Aziz Ojolari, Jihad Ward, Tamon Fox, and Oshik Zimenez. Um, so I have. I don't know if Zimenez is one hundred percent lock, just because I feel like if they're going to sign somebody else and cut him. But Tamon Fox has been really good. In, the preseason, um, he's uh, he's gained a lot of pressure. Uh, he's just been very good. I feel like he's he's just getting he just gets really he just gets in there. He just brings pressure. He brings the boom. He's a hard hitter. And he's like a tackler. I, I like him on Fox. I think he's he was very good in North Carolina. He had like a couple. And he like a couple seven and a half sack season, like nine and a half sack season, which was a senior year or his last year in college because he, he played like five or six years in college, something like that. So he's was he he's been pretty good for us. So I expect big things from him too. And then Kayvon and Z's are starters. So, and now we get the inside D line. Um, we got Dexter Lawrence. He's the newest tackle. Leonard Williams, a defensive tackle. It's like the say It's like the say They're inside D line. Um, but Dexter Lawrence lines up a little more inside the guard than Leonard Williams. Well, like Leonard Williams would be like outside Shea, like Ashawn Robinson, because they're like a little more speed. And then, um, and like Sir Lawrence is like stuffs to run. And then you got Rakeem known as Rochez Nacho. And then you got Jordan Riley, which has been a stud for us. He's 6'5, like 330. You can't teach size, like Brandon Brown said. I think he, if you, if you look at this draft class, no shades, absolutely. It so far is it looks, it's looking pretty good for us. Like these look like long term pieces at every pick. So, you only could be excited for the track list. And I forgot to do a slide for the special teams. I'll just say it now. Special teams, Jamie Gillen, punter, Casey Kreider, long snapper. Um, also, Jamie Gillen, uh, placeholder, and then you already know who's next, Graham Gano, kicker. So that's about it. Uh, that's my 53-man roster prediction. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of my prediction. Uh, let me know if you who you would put in or like what you would change. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.